holy but Jesus, it's done. <laughs> I've been on this one for like a solid week and it 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 drove me mad a little bit. <laughs> I love the image, but working on this was a bit of a chore. Um yeah, it's as you can see, it's a lot of 310, a lot of brown. So if you're looking at this wondering, yes, it, it was a little bit of a boring palette to work with after a while. <laughs> yes, I did get a little bit burnt out on it. Um, and yes, my next project is probably going to be pretty colorful after this. But I stuck with it because I do really like the theme of it, the emotion behind it. And, you know, why does anybody stick with anything that's a little bit hard? You get the payoff in the end. It's not just art. It's do you get into anything? Sports, a job, accolades, whatever. You usually do it because you, you stick with things because there's something at the end of it you're hoping to get, even if it's just the sense of accomplishment and, hey, man, I worked through that. <laughs> I got to find out what it's like not to stop in the middle. So that was kind of what kept me going with this. And I do really like the end product. It's just, it was a lot of brown and black. Uh, and I don't know if it's that easy to tell looking at it as a whole, but this was almost completely confetti. Almost. These little crystals I did in here, uh, it's not really part of the graft kit. I just got bored doing brown <laughs> and black over and over again. So just to kind of give my mind a break and also up the sort of spacey, fantasy, emo, sci-fi kind of feel to it um, to make it more like, you know, like I said, fantasy or um, magical, whatever. Uh, I thought I would throw in some crystals to make it feel more like a spell was happening here or something so I put little different crystals they're kind of hard to tell but they're some of them are like light pink some of them are sort of a smoky gray um, there's a little bit of oil slick here and there you can kind of spot one there in the corner um, I put a few in her dress just to make it a little bit magical looking uh, I don't know if you can tell from a distance because it looks kind of fine far away but her eye was just one black dot. And when I did that, it looked eerie to me and off. <laughs> um, it looked like she went a little bit soulless. <laughs> um, and so I just, I wanted something a little bit softer and I couldn't quite find the right fit until I came up with this one blue, it's sort of an icy blue crystal. And up close, it still looks a little bit weird, but far off, it kind of looks like she has her eyes closed. So it works from a distance better than the big black dot, I think would have worked. So the whole reason I'm making this video is I figured I've got to do a ceiling thing on this. And I did a little bit of a framing, different type of framing experiment on this. And I thought I would kind of do a little bit of a video because I don't know that I've done a video about framing different types of framing options um, for people that are new to diamond art. Uh, one thing I think I might have mentioned in one of my videos before is one thing you tend to run into in diamond art is they can come in weird sizes <laughs> once you're done with them, once you cut the extra canvas off. They can be a little bit odd shaped and you have to get a little bit creative sometimes with how to finish them off and make them look nice if you want to put them on your wall. So I thought I would talk a little bit before I get into what I'm doing here, I would talk a little bit about other options I've done in the past. These two um, were just Walmart finds, I think. I'm pretty sure these both came from Walmart. Luckily, this one was just a general 30 by 30. I think it was slightly off on the edges, but not too bad. So I just ended up doing a couple borders of washi tape around the edges to fill it in a little bit and then just put a simple white border. But this is a Groot one I did way back in the day, a uh, couple years ago. And then this is a simple uh, snap-in one, like this plastic here. It just pops up and you just um, put your picture in there and this siding just snaps around the back of the glass or the edges of the glass. And then the back has um, 
hanging holes there depending on which way you want to hang it so you can see there the gold backing that's just uh, wrapping paper i put around the cardboard that comes with this and i just taped it back there and then just i don't remember if i glued this or taped it i might have just taped it like double sided taped it something on there um these are all from ones i did uh well most of these are from ones i did a couple years ago um so that's like my mosaic tree one this is one that i got from um aliexpress a couple years ago year and a half ago i can't remember now but <laughs> probably wouldn't know it to look at it now but this is one of those ones i got from alex and i'm not saying all my ones from aliexpress come like this most of the ones i've gotten from aliexpress arrive just fine this particular one that i was really excited to work on because i happen to like sort of romantic gothic style art this one came up came <laughs> into my mailbox really balled up and uh wrinkly and just look like it had been through hell and back a few times over by the time it got to my door. Uh, it was a lot of work to get this thing even remotely flattened out. And even to place the diamonds on it, I had to do a lot of stretching while I was placing diamonds. So I would do like a little corner and then I would pull and then I'd do a little corner and I'd pull. And I had to do that even after ironing out the canvas. Um, and you can still, if you look at it, kind of closely you can still see a tiny bit of rippling in there that just would not come out um but again from far away can't really tell that uh it only really shows up when you're like up on it so you can kind of see the ripple there a little bit at some point i was just like that's just as good as i'm gonna get it um but i still love this one i this is another one that i fought with a, a lot on the canvas uh, as far as getting the diamonds to uh, this one had so many popping drills and it's just round drills it's just that the canvas was so damaged but i it was one of those projects that i just i really wanted it to work out so i stuck with it i got it to work out i changed some of the colors around the candle and stuff um, gave it a little bit more of a blue flame in the back and all that and tweak the shading on the on the star a little bit all that kind of thing um i don't know that i did a, a lot of edits on i think i did this one a little bit before i got really into like ab's and stuff uh i did put some of that sparkle mod podge finish on it i think you can see in there well it's showing up a little bit I don't, you can see it on the back of the canvas when you're like up close to it sometimes you'll see a little bit of a flex of glitter here and there um that's how i sealed this but this one uh i'm pretty sure i went to oh, hobby lobby i think and just got a stretch canvas on a wood frame so this one's actually a little bit heavy uh, which also helped kind of pull the wrinkles out of the canvas um but yeah i got one of those i forget how much this was um i don't know something like 15 bucks or something like that it wasn't horribly expensive um i did a um sort of <laughs> graffiti spray paint job on the edges to try to make it look a little bit you know worn uh to match the sort of gray color uh in the celtic knot area um, so that when it was on the wall, it wouldn't look weird and it would just like white or something. But I think I just ended up like, uh, what is that stuff? E6000. I think that's what it's called. The super duper adhesive glue. I think I just tacked a bunch of that onto the canvas and then just flattened this out the best I could and then just let it sit until it was dry. Uh, so that's how I framed that one. And then that one over there. That's just a magnetic frame I got from Amazon. Um, you get it, the whole, you get the, um, it's four pieces. Um, so you get the bottom part that has three magnets in it. And then the top part with the hanging string has three magnets in it. And you just click it on uh, one side to the front, one side to the back. And there you go. That's, that's your framing for that one. Pretty sure that was off of Amazon. So with this one, uh, this working on this one actually reminded me of some of the struggle I had working on that one. So I wanted to do something kind of similar. Uh, so I went over to 
Walmart to see what they had. I originally had foam board in mind, but I couldn't quite find what I was looking for. And then just happened to glance and spot this. This is a three pack they have of uh, 16 by 20 um, canvas. I want to say it might be like canvas wrapped in cardboard or something. Um, it doesn't really feel like wood. I don't know if it says on there. I don't know what they have it wrapped around. Uh, but it's canvas board, basically. So it, it is pretty sturdy. Uh, so you get a three pack. I think this was like nine bucks, I think, at Walmart. Uh, so what I ended up doing is I had some of this sort of, it looks really red in the camera, but it's actually closer to like a cranberry color in person. And, and I figured it would kind of match her dress here. So I painted that earlier today and let that dry this morning. Um, and then just a little while ago, I tried to tack down, I'm going to have to hit that corner again. Uh, I tried to tack down this on the board. I can't find my E6000 tube. So I ended up just pulling the weld bond, which is kind of in the same family of adhesive, uh, and did basically the same process. Um, as far as, uh, basically I, I used a few glue dots up at the top here just to kind of hold it in place. And then I just put a bunch of weld bond underneath the canvas part here and then just smoothed it out uh, the best I could. And the corners here keep wanting to curl up. So I had to go a little bit heavy there. Um, I probably won't leave it like this. I mean, I will for now. Um, but eventually what I want to do is put more of a, because this is just electrical tape that I put on here because I didn't really have this was one of those canvases where there wasn't really much of a glue field to stick to, um, which is sometimes good. Sometimes <laughs> if you want to put a canvas border on it, um, there's nothing really to stick to it that well, uh, because the glue pretty much stopped where the drill stopped. So with the electrical tape, that was the best option I had for this particular canvas without it looking weird with the theme but I don't really love the way it, it looks just as is quite yet um so what I'll probably end up doing is getting the like decorative sticker stuff that's like either um you know the the foam pieces that are made to look like carved wood or maybe the um decorative tape that looks like lace something like that uh, and finish this off a little bit better down the road and also I need to get a hanger for the back of this uh, so it can hang up somewhere. Um, otherwise, <laughs> it's just going to be one of those things that just props up against the wall for a while. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to hit that corner again because this one's, it keeps, these corners keep wanting to curl up a little bit. But yeah, I thought I would just uh, talk about that for a minute so people new to this can get some ideas of how you can frame some of the more odd sizes or if you just need framing ideas in general. Uh, I also need to seal this because um, I did have not as bad as I had with that one but there were a few areas in here where I had some issue with popping drills in the background so just to be safe I think I'm going to put a light uh, clear gloss shellac on it. I'm not going to do like the glitter finish and stuff uh, on this one. I don't think it really fits with the theme for this particular one so I'm just going to do clear finish so I thought while I'm doing this video I'll go ahead and show you how I do that. I don't really have a canvas that I'm doing the glitter finish on right now so when I come up with a canvas that I'm doing that on I'll do another video and show you that part. So stay tuned and I will show you the sealing process for this one. Okay, this part will be real quick because it's a pretty simple process as far as doing a clear gloss coat, uh, no sparkle. I end up using, this is just the method that I use. This is what works for me. Um, this is the combination I've found that um, will still give you the gloss, but not make this super, the canvas super stiff, which I guess if you're, um, you know, backing it against something, it's not as important maybe, but 
you know, but, uh, <laughs> a lot of us don't like the, the canvas to get super stiff once we seal it and also dull out the sparkle. That's the other thing is, um, this is one way I've found that doesn't take away a bunch of the sparkle. So, uh, what I do is I found this Americana Dura Clear High Gloss Varnish from Deco Art. You can see there, I got it at Hobby Lobby for about $7.50. Uh, this is a eight fluid ounce bottle. And then I also have almost knocked that all over. Ooh. <laughs> I also have Liquitex, uh, basic acrylic gloss gel medium. I believe I found this on Amazon. So what I do is I just put a little squirt of each into a little tiny cup. Um, this is like, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the size on this is, but it's like one of those, you know, when they give you pills at the hospital or something they're like here take this um it's like those little mini plastic cups um i think i just got this at like the grocery store uh i just put um a few drops like a a decent size squirt of each one in into a cup and then i just swirl it around till it looks pretty well mixed and then all i do is i just go i start pick a corner go corner to corner basically kind of drift towards the middle <laughs> um, and I basically just do this I just sort of smear a good amount of the varnish on there and then I go back over that section this is what helps keep it not super stiff when it dries so that you can still move the canvas uh, I dilute it with a water so basically you're doing a water wash on this uh, and you don't want it like super soaked, but if you get a little bit of excess water, it's, it's fine. Cause what I end up doing is, uh, once I get all of it coated to my satisfaction, I'll just take a paper towel and blot over the, the top of it again, corner to corner until I cover the whole thing. Uh, just real quickly. You don't have to leave the paper towel on there. That's my dog in the background playing with the cats, I think. <laughs> um, so you don't, you don't leave the paper towel on there. I basically just do that and lift it up real quick just to get the excess off. Kind of like, you know, you were taking grease off food or, you know, <laughs> using oil sheets on your face, that kind of thing. Just real quick, blot it over. Uh, and then after that, I just stick it usually outside if it's a nice day, stick it somewhere safe to dry. It usually <laughs> roughly takes about maybe 20, 30 minutes to dry completely. And then you're good to go. You can do whatever you want with it. So that's what works for me. And yeah, this is it. This is my whole process to get a clear varnish on there, basically. And it's not super heavy. It gives you the nice shine. Oops, I'm like totally not in camera, am I? <laughs> I'm like watching my own hand. Uh, so yeah, I'll do this real quick and then show you what it looks like when I have it all covered. Okay, just finished getting the varnish on there. You can see it's still a little bit milky looking because it's still wet. <laughs> um, but I did the uh, paper towel blot over it. Uh, got most of the moisture up, so it's pretty sunny outside right now. So I'm going to go stick this on my back porch area, let it sit out for, like I said, about 20-30 minutes, see what it looks like, and come back and show you. And here we go. Here is the finished product for now. Um, as you can see, all the shine is retained. Get my hand positioned right. Okay, uh, all the shine is retained. Still plenty sparkly. So, yeah, it came out really nice. So, uh, I forgot to mention, um, any of the kits that I showed earlier in here, um, I know I said that I did them a few years ago, a lot of them, but, uh, I do a post review for pretty much every kit I finish on my, um, blog, which is linked down below, but I will try to go back through my blog and see, um, the link pages for, for those kits whenever I finish them, I'll try to track them down and link those down below. And at the bottom of all my blog posts, if I can find a, um,
purchase link for anything that I do. I always include it at the bottom of the post that it's relevant to. So uh, I'll link the blog down below. And then if you click on that and scroll to the bottom of the post of whichever kit you're interested in, if there is a link that I found at some point that had that kit listed, there's a cat. This is, I think this is Huck. Yeah, that's Huck. Um, I have two black cats that are biological brothers and sometimes if, I can tell them apart if I see their faces, but sometimes body wise, they look pretty similar. Hey, Huck. <laughs> I guess he wants me to wrap up here. Okay, so yeah, I was just saying um, whatever you're interested in, uh, I'll try to put a link down below for um, those blog posts, which will have in the blog post will have purchase links if they're available at the end of those posts. And if those links don't work, let me know and I'll try to see if I can track them down somewhere. A lot of those kits that I showed earlier in the video, they date back like a year or two. So I don't know how many of those are still around, but I'll do my best. So yeah, this is what I have for right now. I will talk to you guys later. Thank you.